Uh, my name is uh, De, my name is uh, I'm from the Microsoft uh, Open Source Technology Center. Uh, today I'm here. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, my, my, my name is De I'm from the Microsoft uh, Open Source Technology Center, and uh, today I'm here. Uh, to give you a, a presentation about uh, our performance, uh, our network performance improve work uh, on uh, FreeBSD guest uh, on Hyper-V. Um, actually, uh, the, the work is done uh, by our team. So uh, I'm giving the presentation today actually uh, on behalf of the whole team. Uh, this is uh, the outline of my presentation. Uh, first, I will uh, show some uh, um, background uh, introduction to the, the base driver, the so-called uh, integration services for FreeBSC, the base driver. And uh, next, I will uh, detail our work, uh, our improvement on the on our Hyper-V network device driver. The, the, the name of our device driver is called uh, uh, HV. Uh, net uh, VSC, or sometimes we call it uh, HN in the FreeBSD context. The, the work uh, includes the, we enable the VMBus multi-channel. Uh, we, we enable the uh, various uh, offloading, like the checksum offloading, TCP uh, segmentation offloading, and uh, large receive offload. And uh, we enable the virtual RSS and uh, finally, I will give some uh, uh, performance data we collected uh, uh, in the Hyper-V environment and uh, on the error environment. Uh, this is a so-called uh, integration service uh, for uh, FreeBSC. We, we, uh, we usually call it uh, the BIS. Uh, uh, when we refer to the driver, we call it uh, the BIS driver. Uh, Actually, to run, free, uh, to run FreeBSD uh, as a guest on Hyper-V, the base driver is uh, not a must. Uh, in this case, uh, the, uh, the FreeBSD guest uh, use a legacy device emulated by the Hyper-V. And uh, you know, in this case, uh, you, uh, you will have a, a very poor performance because the legacy device emulated by Hyper-V is, uh, uh, is not efficient as to the performance. So, so actually, to have a, a good performance in the FreeBSD guest on Hyper-V, actually, we have to yeah, use the, the static device printed by the Hyper-V. The static device, um, the emulation of the static device of Hyper-V is uh, much efficient uh, considering the, the I.O. Uh, efficiency, so uh, we we we, uh, we um, so, so so usually we we have to use the, the static device and uh, we have to run the related static static device driver in the guest. The the static device driver uh, is the, the so called uh, so called uh, the base driver. The base driver includes. Uh, uh, the base driver includes uh, uh, a bunch of uh, device driver for the synthetic device. Uh, and uh, I think the most important is uh, the disk I.O. driver, the block disk I.O. driver, and the network device driver. And uh, here, today, uh, our focus is uh, the network device driver. And, and uh, this is uh, the high-level architecture of the uh, Hyper-V and the integration service driver for FreeBSD. As, uh, on top of the uh, hardware, we have a, a thin layer called the Hyper-V, the hypervisor, the so-called uh, Type 1 hypervisor. And uh, uh, above the hypervisor, we, we have uh, uh, s uh, some uh, guest or virtual machine running. Here, the, fir here the, the first uh, Special virtual machine is a Windows a Windows guest. The Windows guest uh, is a privileged guest 
and uh, sometimes we call it a uh, uh, management OS because uh, it has the privilege to create uh, the other virtual machine. And, uh, with, the, and uh, with, with the help of the hypervisor, the host OS, the, the first uh, uh, VM, the, the Windows uh, OS, uh, have control to the most of the physical device, including the disk controller, the physical uh, NIC. Uh, and uh, in, the, in, the, in the red is the, the unprivileged guest, uh, and here the, the, the guest is a FreeBSD virtual machine. And uh, uh, here uh, we can, we can uh, uh, look at the, the yellow block. Uh, uh, in, the, in the host OS, we have, uh, in the host OS, we, we have the uh, related uh, the back end driver for the VM bus and the uh, virtualization service provider, we call it the VSP driver. And uh, in the FreeBSC VM, we, we have the, uh, the related front end driver for the VM bus and the related synthetic device driver, including uh, here we, we give some, uh, for example, the storage VSC, uh, it means the storage virtual service consumer or client, that's the, that's the front end driver for the block device. And the second one is the, the net VSC, means the, the front, end, uh, front end driver for the network device. Uh, we, we will uh, detail or improvement of that driver here today. And uh, the, the, net, the net VSC driver actually um, create a, a, a virtual a net, uh, a virtual NIC called as the, the interface net. And uh, on top of that, uh, we, we have the TDP network stack. And the, in, the, in the user mode of the FreeBSD VM, we have uh, applications uh, which uh, use uh, the BSD socket uh, talking to the TDP stack and uh, uh, finally, talking to the net VSC, and the net VSC will uh, pass the data, the package uh, uh, from or to the host through the VM bus. And let, let, let's take a, take a close look at the, the network pass in the next slides. Um, Uh, this is, this, is uh, 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 this gives them a much uh, detail about the uh, networking path. For example, uh, for example, uh, the, the virtual machine one, uh, we, 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 we can think is the, the FreeBSD virtual machine. Um, the, the application, uh, the application in the FreeBSD virtual machine uh, can create a socket and uh, use the socket to create some. Uh, uh, for example, TDP connection, and the, 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 the application sends the data through the syscall um, by the, the virtual NIC, the NIC card. And finally, the, the, the data will be passed to, to the network device driver, uh, that's our Hyper-V network device driver. And uh, our Hyper-V device driver uh, receive, uh, gets the M buffer passed by the TDP stack, the, the our driver will um, wrap the M buffer with uh, some uh, uh, some header. Uh, the, uh, the, the header, the 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 our network device driver uh, communicated with uh, the host, with the related uh, the uh, VM bus backend, and the related uh, network VSP backend in the host through the remote uh, NDS protocol. The front end uh, append some uh, um, header to the uh, buffer and uh, send the uh, uh, remote NDS message to the host. And the host uh, uh, receive, after the host receives the, the NDS message, the host will um, get the payload and uh, Pass the, the, the payload, the, I mean the, uh, 
uh, Ethernet uh, package to the virtual switch, and the virtual switch driver will pass the, the real payload, I mean, the, the real uh, Ethernet frame uh, to the physical leak card through the physical device driver, that's the mini port driver. This is, this is, uh, this is uh, the um, networking, uh, the, the, data, the data flow, the data pass in, the, in this environment, uh, in this uh, virtualized environment. So uh, compared with the, the native case, uh, we, we can see uh, a big problem in this model, in this architecture, is the, the long I.O. pass and uh, this uh, inefficiency. And this will cause a lot of problem, and uh, I will address them in, 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 my, uh, in my slides. Uh, let me let me give, uh, give you an um, introduction about the how our base driver evolves. Um, in, 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 uh, we, uh, the, when we take over, when we take over the development uh, of the base driver, actually we 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 uh, we are uh, the free BSE already released uh, ten dollar one. So. For for the older FreeBSD uh, version, we, we have uh, separate uh, ports uh, available, uh, the, the base driver ports available for, and uh, for uh, FreeBSD 10 and uh, newer BSD version, we we, we, we have uh, built-in, we have the base built-in support in the distribution in the version. In the FreeBSD 10 and uh, 10.1. We, we only have the very basic support of the base driver, so you can see the performance is not very good. Uh, and uh, in FreeBSD 10.2, we, 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 we enhanced the, the core functionality. Uh, please uh, see, uh, see the you know, board from the, we, 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 we enabled the VMBus smart channel, uh, checksum offloading, TSO, and in 10.3, we enable, we further enhanced the networking performance and uh, stability um, by LRO, VISS, and uh, some other uh, technologies. And uh, I will uh, detail them in my later slides. Uh, this is uh, the, the list I will uh, describe uh, later. The VMPass multi-channel checksum offloading TSO LRO and uh, VSS, and uh, this is uh, our uh, test and devel development environment. We have uh, two Windows Server uh, 2012 R2 host, uh, and we have a pair of uh, a pair of Intel 10 GB NIC uh, connected directly between the two hosts, and. Uh, we have uh, uh, one VM running on the host uh, respectively. And uh, the, the, for the case that we, we use uh, uh, eight uh, voltage CPU and uh, four GB memory. Uh, we, and uh, we use the NetProf as the uh, promise uh, uh, measurement tool. Uh, the, the, the first one is uh, about the VMBus multi-channel on SMP guest. Um, VMBus, uh, VMBus channel uh, is act actually, uh, in essence, is uh, is uh, uh, um, it's a big memory buffer shared between the guest and the host, and uh, we uh, we have some uh, hypercore based signaling uh, signaling uh, mechanism. Uh, and uh, when when I talk about to the NIC, NIC device, uh, one VMBus channel actually means one uh, transmit queue and one receive queue. A VM, uh, the shared memory between the the, the the shared memory of a channel between the host and the guest is actually a ring buffer. When when the host uh, uh, or the, uh, when, when the host or the guest uh, tries to send data to uh, the peer, they just uh, rather, rather copy the data uh, into the ring buffer and uh, 
maybe call a uh, hypercall to uh, interrupt the, the pair. The issue, the, 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 the issue with the, uh, the older VMBus driver uh, in the FreeBSD 10.1 is uh, uh, even the, the guest is the SMP, for, uh, for example, the guest, use, uh, the guest has uh, many uh, virtual CPU, but uh, all the channels are bound to uh, the first CPU, that, that's the virtual CPU uh, zero. Uh, this, this, this is an uh, artificial limit uh, in the um, early version of the Windows uh, host. Uh, for example, the Windows uh, 7 only so, uh, support the vCPU zero bound to the, the channel. But actually, in recent uh, Windows uh, host, uh, like uh, win Windows 8 uh, and uh, the later Windows, uh, we, we actually we can spread uh, the, uh, the, the channel, the, the bound CPU to different uh, virtual CPU. So, uh, so, so the first, the first thing is uh, we we uh, we enhance the, our VMBus code in the FreeBSD guest to support uh, uh, to binding different channel to different uh, virtual CPU. This was done in the FreeBSD 10.3. Um, with, 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 with this, uh, uh, for example, uh, the, the device, the the storage device driver. Can have its own channel bound to virtual CPU one, and uh, the NIC device ch channel can uh, have its uh, channel bound to virtual CPU uh, maybe one or two. I mean, the different uh, devices can have their channel bound to different virtual CPU. So, 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 so this can uh, potentially use the, the SMP. Uh, this this, this remove uh, this, I think this remove a uh, bottleneck uh, in the, the virtual CPU side uh, because uh, previously the only bound to the CPU and uh, only CPU uh, virtual CPU one can handle the channel interrupt. Oh. Uh, the, the the second improvement is uh, for some uh, promise critical device, for example. The storage device and the network device. Uh, actually, now we have uh, the device that have the ability to create uh, more than one channel. But by, by default, uh, uh, a static device has only one channel. But for the promised critical device, actually, the the they can uh, have a, a special ability to enable more more channel. We uh, we enabled this. Uh, uh, in the FreeBSD version 10.2. Uh, so I give the two improvements here, but the, the, they are not uh, directly to improve the network performance. Uh, they, they, they just uh, remove some uh, the CPU bottleneck handling the channel interrupt. They, they, they are not uh, directly to um, improve the network performance. Uh, but uh, um, considering if you have a uh, two, if uh, one voting machine have a uh, two NIC, the, 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 the interrupt handling of the two NIC can be uh, spread into two different, uh, two different uh, voting CPU. So this uh, uh, actually can help to improve the performance uh, uh, indirectly. <laughs> and. Uh, the the meaning uh, the meaning of the second one, uh, I mean, uh, enable the multi-channel for uh, one device for one uh, province critical device uh, actually uh, paves the way for the virtual receive size scaling support. Uh, I will um, talk about that in in my later uh, slides. Um, Uh, when, 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 we, when we try to uh, measure the promise of the Hyper-V device, uh, synthetic device, uh, the, the, the first issue, uh, the first obvious uh, phenomenon we noticed uh, is uh, the CPU utilization is very high in both the, the send side and the receive side. The CPU, uh, the, the CPU utilization is very high. Um, uh, uh, we 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 um, 
profiled the, the code execution by uh, Beatrice and the, uh, and the top, uh, top command. They both show the interrupt handling is very uh, time consuming. It almost uh, can, uh, consume, uh, consumes the uh, one, uh, 100% CPU. It, 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 I mean, it's uh, uh, saturated the single CPU. And uh, this is an uh, obvious uh, um, bottleneck. Um, so uh, how to, uh, uh, how to uh, analyze this uh, issue and uh, improvement? Uh, uh, first, uh, we, we, we know uh, the Hyper-V supports uh, the checksum of loading. Uh, this, uh, which means uh, um, the guest can offload the IP checksum, uh, TDP checksum, and the UDP checksum to the host, and the host potentially can make use the uh, capability of the modern uh, NIC card, NIC to uh, compute the checksum. Uh, you, we know the checksum computation may be uh, time consuming. So, so, the, so the, f the, the first real thing we do we, uh, is we enable the checksum of loading. This is uh, actually simple uh, when you talking about the implementation. We, uh, when, the, when, when our Hyper-V device driver uh, in the in the init, uh, initialization uh, function, we, we just uh, when we register the, the uh, our virtual NIC to the uh, TCP IP stack, uh, we we uh, specify the capability. We uh, support the the checksum of loading. So uh, when the TCP stack uh, pass data to our uh, network device driver, the 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 TP stack will pass down the M buffer with the related checksum flag. I mean that the TP stack itself won't uh, doesn't uh, calculate the checksum and they just pass the M buffer with the payload data with the, the flags and uh, or, or Hyper-V network device driver just uh, uh, pass the, 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 the data to the, the host with the, the related flag. Uh, with the R remote RNDS protocol with the host. And uh, in, the, in the receive pass, actually, uh, we, uh, the receive pass is done with the, 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 with the, similar, uh, with the similar, with the, the same technology. When uh, the host pass the Ethernet frame to us, the host can um, um, give the, the related uh, flag with the Ethernet frame, and uh, we, we just uh, create an M buffer with the related flag and, uh, and push the, uh, hand over the, the uh, M buffer to the upper layer, the TP stack. Uh, after we uh, implement uh, this, uh, we, we can see the performance. We actually uh, got a, a network uh, throughput uh, improvement by 200 uh, Mbps uh, in both the sender side and the receiver side. Uh, before, before this optimization, the, uh, the network uh, throughput uh, is uh, actually about uh, uh, 2 Gbps. Uh, remember the, the underlying the, the physical NIC is uh, 10 Gb NIC. So before this uh, uh, checksum of loading, the, the sender and the receiver throughput is only about two, GB, uh, two Gbps, and uh, with this optimization, we, we have a slightly bigger performance number, about uh, uh, two to two Gbps. It's not big, <laughs> as uh, we uh, we we expected uh, this can uh, can be bigger, but uh, the fact is um, the the throughput the the promise improvement is not so big, and. Uh, and the, 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 the CPU utilization situation is the, is the same. The single virtual CPU, the CPU cycle is almost uh, used up by, by the interrupt handler. So we, 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 uh, we analyzed the, the interrupt handling, and we, we, we found uh, the m m most of the CPU cycle are uh, spent on the, are spent on the Protocol processing. Uh, typically, typically, 
the interrupt the interrupt handling. What the interrupt what the interrupt handler doing is about uh, uh, processing the uh, let's take the TDP as an example. The interrupt handler uh, uh, first uh, have to process the incoming TDP segment uh, or the the ACK the the, the TDP ACK package, uh, and uh, we up the process if uh, there is uh, some pr uh, process has waiting for data on that socket. And then later, the interrupt handler will need to send the ACK to the peer, to the peer, or uh, send the pending ongoing, uh, pending outgoing TDP segment. So uh, we, 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 we identified the uh, most, uh, most of the TPU, uh, CPU cycle is uh, spent on, on this thing. So, so we, we have to find a way to uh, to uh, lower the CPU utilization, and uh, we uh, have to uh, find a, a solution to improve the throughput. So, so uh, the first uh, the first thing is uh, we, we we try to uh, optimize the the sender side because uh, we know uh, hyper V support uh, because we we know the hyper V support the technology called the TDP segmentation overload. Uh, this, or we call it the TSO. The principle of the TSO is uh, uh, when, when um, FreeBSC VM try to send uh, a lot of uh, data, try to send a big chunk of data, it, it, it can offload the uh, TDP segmentation work, the, the time consuming uh, TDP segmentation work uh, to the host, uh, and the host uh, potentially can uh, make uh, use the, the uh, capability of the modern NIC uh, to do the real uh, TDP segmentation work. This uh, this uh, um, can save a lot of uh, TCP, uh, CPU cycle of the host and the guest. So uh, the the, the implementation is very simple as uh, the checksum of loading. We, we, we on, the, on our driver uh, initialization, we just uh, uh, register, we, we, we just notify the upper, layer, uh, the upper layer, the TP stack, we have the ability to do the TSO. So, uh, so when the TP stack try to send a big chunk of data, the TP stack uh, uh, just pass the, uh, 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 just passed a, a big, uh, a very big uh, buffer chain to the to our driver. The 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 buffer can be the size of uh, size, the size of uh, the of the buffer can can be up to the six to four k bytes. And the, the our driver, have we driver net VLC just uh, uh, hand them over to the host with the the, the TSO the remote RNDS header. And the, the pa pass the, the, the data to the, the host. This improvement uh, seems uh, pretty uh, straightforward, and uh, the, the, the effect is very good. Uh, we, we can see uh, with, with our net perf tool, we can see the the sender throughput increased significantly. The the number the props number uh, the sender props number was uh, 2.2 Gbps, and uh, with the, the TSO technology, the send throughput uh, can be uh, 4.5 to 7 Gbps. We can we can see the we can see the the performance uh, uh, is uh, basically uh, tri uh, triple triple the, but but the uh, at the same time the interrupt handler. Uh, the CPU utilization of the CPU uh, of the interrupt handler drops from the 100 percent to only uh, 60 uh, and to 80 percent of a single CPU. So uh, we can see that the, the TSO is very effective to uh, boost the, the uh, throughput in the center side, in the center pass. Uh, but but how about the receive side? The TSO is uh, only uh, 
uh, supposed to improve the throughput in the, the center side uh, when you, you, you send the big chunk of data in the, in the center side. But uh, how about the receive side? Uh, uh, so uh, the, the currently, with the TSO, the issue in the, 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 issue in the receive, receive pass in the receive side is uh, the CPU utilization is uh, still very, uh, very high. Almost, uh, almost uh, um, a single, a single, uh, single, single virtual CPU is saturated by the interrupt handler. So we, we, we have to find a way to uh, lower the CPU utilization in the receive pass. That that uh, that we 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 are going to talk about the LRO, large receive offload. Here the LRO is the, is not the the hardware LRO. It's uh, only the uh, software LRO, which means the uh, the FreeBSD itself uh, have a software LRO implementation. The 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 soft LRO API. The 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 principle of the LRO is. Uh, uh, when uh, when we receive uh, a lot of uh, packets uh, from the network device, uh, we we don't uh, uh, deliver them to the upper uh, to the upper TPIP stack uh, as soon as possible. We we can we can wait some time and uh, aggregate uh, uh, multiple incoming TP segment uh, or ACK from a single direction, and uh, um, after uh, and we can uh, deliver. The, the segment uh, to to the upper layer in batch. The, this can this this can effectively reduce the, the CPU the, the CPU the protocol processing overhead because uh, you you don't need to uh, run the process run, run the the handler run the pro, run the protocol handler. For the for each package, uh, you you just uh, need to run the uh, run the f uh, invoke the function only once to pro uh, to process a big uh, and buffer chain. Uh, and uh, um, another uh, another advantage of uh, LRO is uh, because uh, the 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 TCP stack can handle a big uh, 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 the TCP stack can handle multiple incoming T, uh, TDP segment uh, once, so it can send uh, less ACK to the peer. We, without uh, we, without uh, LRO, uh, 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 FreeBSD usually send one ACK, uh, send one uh, TDP ACK segment uh, for uh, each, uh, for, for, every, for every two TDP data segment received. And uh, with, with the LRO, because we, we, we the TPS, uh, the TP stack have the ability to process multiple incoming TP segments uh, uh, once, so it, it can, this can significantly reduce the ICK which will be sent to the peer. As, uh, I I made the bond uh, the 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 ICK the the line uh, to bond because I want to emphasize that the. You know the ACK, the ACK package, uh, the ACK package is uh, uh, really a small uh, package. You know the, the, the length of the uh, package is very small, uh, um, and um, in a virtualized environment, uh, especially in the heavy, uh, it's uh, very inefficient to send a uh, small package to uh, because uh, because. Uh, uh, to send a package through the remote RNDS protocol, we, we have to add uh, some uh, header. header uh, at, at least we, we have a uh, uh, remote RNDS header, and we have a VMBus uh, header. So actually, for example, uh, um, the, the, the ACK, the, the length of the TDP ACK, uh, maybe uh, 50. Uh, bytes, uh, but uh, the extra the extra header may be another 50 bytes. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you you can see the efficiency I I is a problem. So uh, we we uh, we we should try to uh, avoid uh, sending the small packages. So by the 
technology of the LIO, we, 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 because we aggregate uh, multiple incoming TDP segment, uh, we, we handle the number um, in one loop. So we, we actually reduce the ACK rate uh, significantly, and uh, we, uh, uh, the, uh, the performance result uh, will prove uh, this uh, really uh, lowers the uh, CPU utilization a lot. Huh? And uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the performance uh, number with the LRO enabled. Huh? We, can see the, we can see the receive pass uh, throughput uh, uh, increase uh, significantly. Previously, previous, uh, the, the receive pass, the throughput number, number is 2002 GBPS. And uh, with the LRO enabled, uh, we have the, uh, the, the performance number goes up to uh, 4 to 5 and to the 7 to 5 GBPS. And uh, the interrupt the handler, the CPU utilization of the interrupt handler also dropped greatly. Previously, uh, almost uh, 100 uh, CPU, uh, 100 uh, percent of a single CPU is uh, sacrificed by the interrupt handler, but now it's only uh, 20 to uh, uh, Forty percent of a single CPU. We can see the CPU utilization uh, really drop a lot. Uh, when when we uh, when we um, testing the I/O, we, we we also found uh, uh, some uh, uh, some issue about the I/O. The first one is uh, uh, actually we 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 found out uh, it's not uh, not a good. Uh, not always good to aggregate uh, uh, as many packages as possible. The, the second one is uh, uh, we, we, we found some uh, throughput, in, in, uh, throughput uh, instability when, when, the, when we have uh, really a lot of uh, TDP connection. And uh, we also found some uh, small throughput uh, jitter, some uh, sudden temporary promise drop, and I will detail them uh, in my little slides. Um, when, when, when using the uh, internal FreeBSD LO API, we, 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 we found that it's not uh, always good to aggregate uh, as many, uh, many packets as possible because uh, actually there are some special cases we need to uh, take care of. The first one is the, the pure, ACK, pure TDP ACK uh, segment. Uh, we received in the FreeBSD VM. For, for, for them, for them we, we, shouldn't, we, we found that we should not uh, aggregate uh, a lot of uh, ACK segment. Uh, for them, we, uh, the, we, we have to timely pass them up to the upper layer, to the upper layer, uh, to, uh, to the upper layer TDP IP stack because <laughs> if the if the FreeBSD uh, TDP IP stack uh, fails to uh, see the ACK uh, timely, the, the, the local sending window uh, is uh, kept very small, so this uh, hurts the TDP performance a lot. The second case is for, for the, the data segment we received. If we uh, aggregate too much of them, I mean, in this case, the FreeBSD VM, the network stack, uh, if, if, if the stack fails to see the data segment timely, we, 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 uh, the ACK sending to the peer may be delayed. So this uh, hurts, the, uh, TP, uh, hurts the TDP performance because the peer's send window uh, cannot be uh, increased uh, timely, so so the solution the solution is uh, we uh, we enhance the uh, FreeBSC LO KPI the kernel API to uh, add the configurable configurable uh, parameter for uh, for uh, for the per connection limit of uh, the, the the aggregated uh, uh, aggregatable data length and the ACK count. And by default, by default uh, 
uh, in our Hyper-V network device driver, we only aggregate uh, uh, 25 uh, MTU, the, the, the data, for, for, one, for one queue. And uh, our for, for the pure, uh, ACK TDP segment, uh, we, we, by default, uh, we only uh, aggregate uh, two at most. And with, with this uh, uh, enhancement, uh, we, 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 we can see we can see the uh, throughput uh, in the both the receive pass and the send pass uh, increase the, uh, a lot again. Uh, for example, in the receive side, uh, with the the, the, the physical, uh, with the physical version of the LRO, the the through, the promise number is only uh, four to five to the seven to five, but with the, the enhanced version of the LRO API, the the uh, promise uh, can reach uh, eight. Uh, to 9.1 Gbps, this is only for one queue. Uh, and uh, and the, 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 the CPU utilization in the receive, receive pass the interrupt handle only uh, go up by about uh, 20%. But we, but we can see the, 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 uh, the promise almost uh, doubled. <laughs> Almost is double, and in the send pass, actually we 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 found the throughput also increased dramatically, from the, uh, the less less than seven Gbps to the uh, eight to nine point one Gbps. Why? <laughs> we 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 found this is uh, because we 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 did the test. Uh, in, in a VM to VM uh, TDP communication, so with the receive side, uh, with the receive side, uh, use the enhanced version of the IRO. Uh, the, the 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 receive side uh, can send uh, less AC key. So uh, the, uh, in the send side, uh, the send side uh, it receives uh, less AC key, and this. Uh, uh, lower the interrupt handle uh, specialization almost uh, by uh, twenty percent to three uh, percent. This is uh, uh, this was uh, expected, but this is a very good uh, result. So 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 this is the, the first improvement to the uh, the system the kernel L API and. Uh, we, we we also found a, we also found a another uh, issue with the, the with the IO because uh, when when we when we when we do a promise test with really a lot of uh, concurrent uh, TDP connection, we found that sometimes the the TDP uh, the, the promise is not uh, stable. This is uh, especially obvious for uh, over sixty four. Concurrent connection per receive ring per receive queue. Uh, our, is, our investigation shows uh, our shows uh, the root cause is uh, the LRO API by default uh, only use uh, eight LRO entry in the in the LRO, in the, LRO the control structure. This means uh, this this means. Uh, when uh, when the the when you have uh, a lot of uh, connect, uh, TDP connection, only eight of the only eight of the uh, TDP connection per receiver ring can actually uh, be uh, uh, speed up by the IO API. So when you when you ha when you have uh, really a lot of uh, um, a, lo a lot of concurrent TDP connection, the 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 IO the effect of the IO actually uh, ac is, is actually disabled because uh, uh, there is, there are, there are only eight entry when when more when when more um, uh, data from uh, more, more uh, connection comes the the existing eight entry will be flushed and when you you ha when you have uh, um, more connection. The effect of the IO is uh, uh, is uh, worse. <laughs> so, 
So to 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 resolve this uh, issue, we uh, we uh, we uh, luckily we, we found a, uh, a new API, a new IO API called the TDP IO init act was introduced uh, in this uh, January. So we 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 we, we uh, improve the our device driver to use this uh, new kernel API to use uh, a bigger um, IO entries by default. But by default, we, we use uh, 128, uh, and we have a, a tunable to uh, change the number if you if you don't, if you want to. Uh, by, by this, uh, uh, after we after we um, uh, you, uh, fix uh, our driver with the, the, the with the more IO entry, the throughput instability issue is gone. Um, How many receivers do you have? Uh, re receiving, um, um, here, I, I, I haven't uh, talked about, uh, about the VSS, so we only have, uh, yeah, we only have one. Uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Here, here, here we only have uh, one queue, one ring, one queue. So, so if you have a, a lot of uh, TP connection, the, the, the IO uh, is actually disabled. <laughs> but it's worse because OMRO is disabled for most of the connections, and then you've got a connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Installed, sitting there, yeah. waiting for the end of the interrupt for somebody to flush them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I wrote the, I wrote Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's all my fault. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you added the API. Okay. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Okay. But 64 against 8 that has problems. It's and 128 against 256 that has problems. Yeah. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a solution in the current code which we'll talk about when we get to the VR stuff. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's continue. Um, we, 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 we also found that uh, sometimes, uh, occasionally, uh, the, the throughput can have a temporary sudden drop. Uh, you know, usually the promise curve is is a, a line, and uh, at some point the promise can drop uh, suddenly, temporarily, and uh, the promise will go up. It's like this. <laughs> so we 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 we. we we uh, uh, we uh, investigated this, uh, uh, and we we found uh, actually the internal data structure in the IO is uh, not uh, very efficient for for the IO entry removal and lookup. In the in the IO API, the IO entry is uh, organized by the uh, single single list uh, single linked list. Um, um, when, um, when, uh, when, for for some for for a given for a given TDP connection, when the limit of the data or the SK count is reached, we have to flash the uh, flash the 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 the, the, the buffer on this uh, TDP connection, this uh, L entry. So uh, after after we uh, after we uh, do the flash uh, flashing. We have to remove the IO entry from the the, the single the, the single linked single linked list, and uh, you know <laughs> a single list uh, the, the remove uh, is uh, not efficient. You you have to um, walk through the, the all the list to find the entry first uh, to find the the, the 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 previous point to the entry, and uh, after that uh, you can. Uh, change the the pointer uh, to to remove the, the 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 entry. So so the, the removal efficiency depends on the location of the IO entry. So so this can cause some uncertainty uncertainty. So we we enhance the we we replace the, the S list with the, the doubly linked list to resolve this question. With the doubly linked list, you 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 have the uh, uh, previous and the next pointer, so you can do the removal 
faster. Another another uh, issue is the uh, the L entry lookup is not uh, efficient if we, you have uh, really a lot of L entries because uh, uh, with, with the the list uh, the doubly linked list uh, when we when we receive uh, a packet and uh, we try to uh, find the related L entry by the by the IP IP address or the port. Uh, the, the, we, we have to we, we, we have to work through the the whole doubly linked list to find the L entry. So we, we can we can see the lookup efficiency depends on the location of the uh, entry also. So uh, to to resolve uh, to uh, improve this uh, issue, actually we we are, we are trying to uh, change the internal data structure from uh, List uh, to hash table, and uh, this work is uh, ongoing, and uh, hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully it will appear in the uh, FreeBSD uh, 11 release. This is work is ongoing. So uh, this is uh, all the improvement, uh, all the optimization work related to the LRO, and. Uh, And uh, let, let me give a summary about the, um, the effect of the different optimization te uh, techniques. Remember, this is, uh, this is only uh, one queue. We have not uh, enabled the, the VR, uh, VRSS yet, uh, the multi queue yet. Uh, the, the, the first uh, column is uh, the original, the base, the promise base of the 10, uh, 10 one. And uh, with the uh, checksum of load, uh, we, we have a slightly uh, bigger promise number. And uh, with the TSO and the LRO, we can see the promise uh, increased significantly. And uh, with the, the TSO and the enhanced version of the LRO, we, 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 we get an even higher promise number. Uh, sorry. What is the very light color versus the very dark color? Uh, uh, the, 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 the blue the blue color means the uh, the ma maximum uh, maximum the, the yeah 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 that that it means the the max this is the range. Uh, how to explain how to explain the range? <laughs> we uh, we uh, believe the uh, the scheduling. The schedule, uh, scheduling in the VM and uh, in the hypervisor maybe uh, contribute to that. Because, uh, you know, for the NetProf test, uh, the, uh, the NetProf test, the NetProf Net program uses uh, one connection for one process. So <laughs> if you have uh, really a lot of uh, TCP connection, you have uh, really a lot of uh, NetProf uh, process. So <laughs> The, 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 the scheduling in the VM may be an issue. And actually, internally, we, we, we have uh, developed some uh, uh, performance, uh, network performance tool based on the QQ. And uh, th that has uh, a better scalability than, than this, than the that problem. Yeah, 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 TDP. Currently, <laughs> we only uh, focus uh, on the TDP, and uh, we, uh, we, we, we I have a to-do item in the uh, in the the the, the, the later slides uh, about the, the we are also going to tune the UDP uh, keys and the package forwarding keys. Uh, that's, that's in our to-do list. Yeah, the data is only for TDP here. Okay. okay. Uh, the, the, the data is uh, 
we 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 collected the, the data uh, with a uh, 10 GB leak. But uh, how about the the promise in the uh, even high speed uh, 40 GB leak environment? Uh, in the in the uh, 40 GB leak environment, uh, I think even with the the I/O, the 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 capability of the single CPU is not enough to to handle the uh, such a high high speed leak, especially in the receive side. In in the in the past, we we have the TSO that can help to save the CPU cycle a lot. But in the 40 GB leak environment, even with the help of the I/O, the 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 single CPU capability. It's not enough, so we 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 have to enable some multi queue technology. That's the next step. The uh, VRSS, the virtual receive side scaling. Uh, we we all know the uh, what's the RSS? RSS uh, actually the virtual RSS is uh, very similar to the. Uh, to the RSS in the native case. Uh, sorry? Do you have the hopeless task result? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well, we can, we can do all over a lot better than we'll talk after this. <laughs> OK. Um, the, the, we, 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 with the help of the RSS or the VRSS, uh, here, the, the help V host, uh, the host OS uh, is able to uh, Efficiently distribute the the traffic to uh, to different uh, guest the virtual CPU, especially in the receive in the receive path. Um, the access can um, help to improve the performance and help to uh, lower the CPU utilization because uh, the, the 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 when the host uh, um, decides. Uh, which uh, which uh, queue in the guest uh, should receive the data? The 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 host uh, use uh, some kind of the hash uh, technology. We 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 will address the detail in the my next slides. But my um, but my my point is uh, this can reduce the local contention because uh, the 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 we 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 make sure the the same connection. For example, for the TCP connection, the same TCP connection is handled by the, the same queue. It, it can reduce the, uh, by the same queue here, actually, uh, basically means the, the same virtual CPU, at least in the receiver, in the receive pass. So, the, so this can effectively reduce the log contention, and uh, we have a better uh, cache locality. So, uh, the, the things can 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 be um, much better with the, the RSS. It's it's very uh, crucial for the really high speed uh, NIC card. And uh, actually, this is uh, this uh, this uh, this graph shows uh, how the uh, V RSS works. Uh, this is some this this uh, is some. Uh, Text uh, t uh, description. Uh, on the, on our driver initial, initialization. First, uh, our driver ask the host to create a multi-channel. Remember, uh, at first uh, I, uh, I mentioned that we enable the VMBus uh, multi-channel. This is it. The, the driver, uh, the driver can use uh, the API uh, implemented by the VMBus driver to. Ask the host to create a multi multiple channel. For example, for eight virtual CPU VM, we, we, we can create a eight channel, one channel for one virtual CPU. And uh, the 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 uh, Hyper-V device uh, network device driver in the FreeBSD VM register the related hash key hash type and the function and the related uh, interaction table to the host. Actually, this is uh, the same concept in the, uh, in the native uh, ISS case. The, the interaction table 
we can we can we can we can we can see the we can see this uh, graph. Is, is it the same hash function as native hardware? Uh, yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. Uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the access uh, is uh, uh, defined by Microsoft and uh, the other company. <laughs> so so actually th th this is, this is uh, this is uh, the graph. When 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 the when our driver. Um, in, in the in our driver initialization, uh, initial uh, initialization, we register the interaction table and the the hash function and the hash key to the to the host. So uh, when 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 the host handles the incoming packets to the to the to the guest to the FreeBSD VM, logically the 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 host the host side. The backend, uh, the host side, the ho the host side will pass the uh, the this information to the to the guest, including the uh, a thirty-two bit hash value and the hash type, and the and the uh, the uh, the seven least significant bit of the hash value is used to index the the induction table. The, the content of the interactive table is uh, filled by the by the guest, so the the, the host uh, uses the hash to index the interaction table and uh, choose the the related channel uh, set, set by the the the, the, the FreeBSD guest. So uh, according to this, according to this uh, picture, we can see. For the same TCP connection, the, the incoming packets of the same TCP connection uh, can be delivered to the to a given uh, to, to a given channel in the to the same given channel in the guest, and in the in the in the guest in the free B, in, in the free B, free BSC guest the in the receive pass handling. The, we 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 remember the C two bit hash value as the, the flow ID as a flow ID, and we we, we pass the, the data with the M buffer and the, with the, and the, the flow ID uh, to the upper layer to the to the FreeBSD TCP stack, and when the and when the uh, FreeBSD TCP IP stack uh, sent data from the same t from the same TCP connection. The same flow ID will be used by our Hyper-V device driver, network device driver, to choose the, 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 the same channel. So, so we can see uh, in, in, in both direction of, uh, of the same TCP connection, um, the, 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 the packet of the same TCP connection is uh, in, in two directions uh, is handled by the same channel. This, this is the key of the uh, access. So we so we, we with the, the, the what you access the enabled for for uh, for SMP uh, FreeBSD guest, we are we are able to use the, uh, all the CPU capability to receive receive the receive the network traffic and. Uh, uh, because uh, in, in, in Hyper-V context, uh, one channel means uh, one uh, TX queue and uh, one receive queue. So for the side, uh, for the transmit, uh, for the transmit pass, uh, we, 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 we also have uh, uh, multiple channel, multiple queue to send, uh, to send uh, uh, data. So this, uh, uh, I think this uh, helps to improve the scalability. In the in the in the 40 GB and uh, high speed uh, NIC environment. So, sorry, so, um, with uh, the two side scaling and, and having multiple virtual CPU and keeping them hot, um, you mentioned that it, it becomes very important at around 40 gigabits, or is it also important before that, or it's just at some point there's kind of a threshold where you have to have that. 
been fantastic to be here. Five years ago, it used to be ten years ago. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, the clock changes as well. No, that's not right. Never changes. Mm -hmm. As much as the week as I could have. Okay. I, I it's, a, it's, a, it's a range. It's a range, depending on how this is. Okay. I, I can give you some uh, promise uh, data here. Uh, th 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 this is uh, this is for the this is the collected uh, with the 10 GB leak. Uh, we 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 have uh, all the optimization enabled, uh, including that the checksum offloading, the TSO IOO, and the VSS enabled. Uh, we 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 can see the uh, uh, with the 60 64. Uh, connection. Uh, the the the, TV, the network throughput, the TCP throughput uh, has reached the uh, uh, about uh, 9.1 Gbps. I think uh, uh, this is uh, this is a very good uh, in my opinion. And uh, actually, the scalability is uh, is good. We can see uh, with the uh, two uh, two thousand uh, connection. The, the, the throughput is, uh, is still scaled very well. And uh, with, uh, only with uh, really a lot of uh, connection, for example, with uh, four key, uh, 4,000 connection or even more, we, we, we can have some uh, promise uh, drop. And uh, actually, we, we are uh, further investigating this. We, we, we thought uh, this may be due to the scheduling. The, 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 the first factor is the uh, scheduling. <laughs> we, we can and uh, this, this, this is the, the promise data with in the uh, with the 40 GB leak on the Azure G5 size VM environment. You can see uh, the, the, this is the, the the connection and this is the throughput. And uh, actually, we can see we, we, we can we have reached uh, about uh, uh, 23 Gbps with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, with the, 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 the TP connection. And uh, I think that uh, the stability is uh, reasonably good. And uh, of, co of course, we also found some uh, issue when, you, when the TP connection, the number of the TP connection is uh, really a lot. And uh, we, we, we that, that's in our to-do to uh, further. With this uh, VRSS, uh, how many queues? Yes, this is with the, the uh, multi queue in How many? Eight queue. Eight queue. Eight eight about the CPU. Okay. Uh, finally, <laughs> this is our to do to do list. Uh, we we really have a lot of to do list. Uh, um, the, 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 the the first the major issue I think is uh, we found that sometimes the the promise is not very, very, sta very stable. Uh, we, um, we, we think the, the, the first thing is the, uh, if when you have a really a lot of uh, net perf uh, process in the guest, the, the scheduling in the guest may be an issue. So we, we, we are uh, developing some uh, uh, KQ-based uh, uh, program to, uh, to test this. And, uh, we we found the uh, 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 a bigger host. Uh, I mean, uh, we 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 have uh, we have a bigger host with uh, uh, thirty two uh, with thirty two uh, CPU cores, and uh, we have two NUMA nodes. And uh, we we found uh, it looks the the host NUMA. I mean, the maybe the hypervisor scheduler. Is not is not NUMA uh, uh, efficient. Uh, is not NUMA efficient. Uh, so the hypervisor scheduler may, may, may cause some uh, bigger uncertainty, and we, we, we are trying to further uh, narrow, narrow this down. We, we we also have to analyze the, the, the throughput and the latency with really a lot of uh, concurrent uh, TCP connections, and. Uh, Actually, the, the current multi queue uh, implementation in our driver is not uh, integrated with the FreeBSD RCS uh, framework, the RCS uh, API. We, we are going to integrate uh, 
with, with that. And uh, another important thing is uh, we, 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 we don't do a lot of uh, investigation for the TDP and the packet forwarding. <laughs> you know, um, the, the, the FreeBSD LL API uh, mainly works for the TDP. If uh, you use the UDP or you use the, you use the FreeBSD VM as a gateway in the packet forwarding case, uh, the TDP IO is automatically disabled. <laughs> so <laughs> this is maybe an issue for the UDP and the packet forwarding case, and we are trying to uh, investigate more on this. Uh, we, are, we are also uh, going to try the net map with our public or with the Hyper-V network, uh, network DS driver, and we, we hope this can help to uh, on the packet forwarding case. And uh, in the long-term plan, we are, we are also going to enable the, the single root ILV, and uh, we, we are going to try the DPDK. So uh, we, we hope this can, can be used to improve the, the especially the packet forwarding, the gateway case. So <laughs> we, we, we really have a lot of to-do item here. So uh, we, we really need the help from the community. Uh, if you are interested, uh, please uh, uh, help to uh, review our design, review our patch, uh, and uh, or even test our patches. We really appreciate uh, your help. And uh, finally, <laughs> let me uh, advertise for uh, advertisement for our Microsoft Azure Marketplace. You know, two days ago, our colleague announced uh, the availability of the FreeBSD 10.3 VM image on the Azure Marketplace. So please try it. <laughs> we, yeah, <laughs> we, we, I, I think we, we have uh, some, uh, we still have some uh, free test code. So if you, uh, yeah. Get it. Uh, okay, that, that's all. That's all for my presentation. Uh, any question? <laughs> any more question? So, um, you guys, I didn't realize. So, I've been talking to Sefe. I'm Gallatin. I've been talking to Sefe about uh, LRO for for a while. Um, he got the hash cable patch actually, actually from us. At Next, I, I work at Nextnet. Yeah, yeah. He got the hash cable patch from us. At Next yeah. Time. But I thought that you guys did not have the RSS hash, the Topa patch available. Is it only in the single piece? You do not have a Topa patch available? How does that work? We, 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 we do have uh, the... We always have the Topa patch. Yeah. So, so do you know how uh, Hans, Hans uh, Peter Sulowski, HTS, recently did uh, some work on LRO, which has helped us tremendously at Netflix. At okay. Netflix, we have uh, 100,000 connections. Uh -huh. And we have uh, typically maybe 20 to 28 to 32 queues. Mm -hmm. uh, at 100 gigabits. Mm -hmm. And so he did something very clever with LRO where he, he it, it took me a long time to understand it. But what he did was he queues up all of the interrupts from the beginning of the interrupt to the end of the interrupt. He does not process the interrupts, he just queues them in a, mm -hmm. big, in a big list, in a mm -hmm. big array. Mm -hmm. And then he sorts the interrupts by, by topo cache results. Mm -hmm. The theory is that the topo cache results from the same connections will be the same. Mm -hmm. And so when he sorts them, then those same connections, then the packets from the same connection will be next to each other. Mm -hmm. And then once he sorted the inbuffs, he then feeds them to LRO. And so that way you avoid the problem of having a limited space, like you know, your your eight queues to sixty-four to sixty-four queues, mm -hmm. or you you have a limited hash table size. Mm -hmm. You avoid um, you avoid being limited in size because all of a sudden all the packets that are that belong together are together, mm -hmm. and so that way you can you can aggregate you know these four packets from from this one connection that are mixed in with uh, you know 500 packets from different connections. Mm -hmm. Whereas previously, you know you might have a packet from this connection, 128 packets from some other connections, and then another packet. Mm -hmm. So you would never aggregate these two. Okay. But now these two are. are Exactly next to each other, mm -hmm. and so you don't need the hash table. All you need is to use the LRO queue M bus mm -hmm. in FreeBSD 11. Yeah, that, that, that sounds like a clever idea. <laughs> and it, it, it actually took us from it took us from an aggregation of 
know, we would receive like 1.1 million packets and then we would push up uh, 1 million packets. It took okay. us to, you know, 4 million packets to, to, to 1 million packets. It took us, it's, it's tremendous. Wow. It took us from like 80, from 75 or gigabits to 90 gigabits. Yeah, yeah, it's a really cl clever idea. We will, we will uh, try to... Uh, so I'll, I'll talk to, I'll email Sethe, because I, I didn't understand, I, I don't think he understood. It's a very difficult concept to understand. Mm -hmm. So once, once the light goes off, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, that's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we will, we will uh, di di uh, di uh, dig into the detail, and yeah. uh, maybe we can uh, talk about that in, in further email. Uh, thank you, thank you. And I, I, I wrote the original LRO that, was that you helped to fix. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did it mainly for benchmarks because I worked for a NIC vendor, mm -hmm. and then it got picked up and moved and copied around and finally wound up with TCPLRO, so mm -hmm. I apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, maybe, maybe the multi queue can help you uh, a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe. <laughs> it's like doing LRO, but for a bunch of other uh, that, that, that maybe need to. Uh, um, it seems that to me that the, the, the cost would be, and, and you know more than I do about this, and yeah. that's why I'm asking, but isn't most of the cost in, in interrupt processing between the host and uh, uh -huh. the guest and the hardware guy? Yeah, yeah. But you, you, you are suggesting we. Modify the host side uh, implementation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that that, 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 that will be much uh, 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 really uh, difficult because <laughs> you know the 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 host side is uh, Windows though, and uh, the the guest uh, <coughs> communicate with the, the host by the remote DS the protocol. So basically, <laughs> we have to live with the, the live with the, this. Uh, Kind of design, and uh, yes, we, we maybe we can influence the host guy to uh, improve the the implementation, but that's a uh, uh, long that's a uh, long 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 term plan, long term. So. Can you talk a, a little bit about the data flow in terms of memory that memory ownership and memory copies between the, the hypervisor and the guest? Because I'm curious. I'm assuming that you're able to directly send from guest memory onto the network when you're transmitting. But I'm assuming that when you receive, you're receiving into buffers that are owned by the 
the host their bus driver and then if they're then copying it to Jeff, is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, there's so on receive there's an extra there's an extra copy, but on send it's it's just zero copy from the VML. Uh yeah, yeah. For the receive side uh, uh actually that uh, that twice copy. The the first is the the host copy the the data into the the guest memory yeah. into the, the, the shared uh, uh, the a driver in driver receive a, a buffer a bigger buffer and the second copy happens when uh, we uh, copy data from the receive buffer to the end buffer yeah, yeah we have two t t two copy and in the center in the center pass in the center pass uh, for a bigger chunk of data uh, generated by the TSO, we we we, we just uh, uh, pass the uh, address of the um, uh, buffer to the host. So we only, uh, I think we 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 only have we we, I think we only, um, I think we we have zero copy. Uh, but but, uh, but uh, yeah, of of course, in the host side, uh, the host have to, uh, yeah yeah, to, to DM, DMA. Um, this, this is the for the big chunk of data. For the small, uh, small, small uh, buffer, uh, I mean for the, the buffer less than uh, six key, key byte, the we, we still uh, copy the the M buffer into, into the shared uh, shared memory and uh, ask the host to read from uh, the buffer, because uh, I think uh, uh, this is this is because. Uh, uh, you know, in a, in a virtualized environment, uh, the, the, the host uh, cannot uh, access the guest memory directly. The host uh, have to map the guest memory, and uh, you know the, the map, uh, the mapping, uh, mapping uh, has its uh, the overhead. So for for small buffer, maybe uh, so direct you're copy. You're pinning the memory on the layer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so for a small buffer. For small packets, uh, maybe uh, chain sending, direct sending, maybe more efficient. Uh. That, that, that's the current uh, no, code. I, <laughs> I worked on some of the Google, Google Cloud stuff when I did that, on, the, on, the, on the hypervisor side. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, any more questions? Uh -huh. Uh, sure, I, I have uh, uploaded the, the slides uh, uh, into the, I, I think the, the FreeBC site, uh, but uh, it, it looks like it's uh, not uh, uh, available, <laughs> not uh, listed in the, in, in the, in the page. Uh. So if you, if you like to, uh, if, you want to uh, if you want the slides, uh, I can just uh, send it to you now. Just uh, uh, give me your email or uh, I just you, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh.